Hello there and welcome to another GenVFX tutorial. Uh, I'm Gary and today we're going to be talking about texture painting. Now everyone knows that Substance is probably one of the best texture painting systems out there. Absolutely without doubt. There are several out there that are very very good. Quixel also being another one. But sometimes you just need to do some texture painting quick and if you're in Blender and you want to just do something very very sharpish normally you just go no, no 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 but then occasionally you think no i really haven't got the time to go anywhere else i need to do this quickly can i do x and y and z in blender well most of the time yes yes you probably can and uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today it's a few little tips and tricks with texture paint so here i have rather than the default cube which you normally see i've got a, a kind of a tudor building which i've been um putting together for the sake of this tutorial but as you can see it looks very very clean it does look very very clean actually if i just very quickly go into cycles render you can see it's you know it's just too perfect it's far too perfect so let's just pop it back into eevee for the speeds and i'm i'm going to show you uh, but let's let's do it this way if i show you what i really want to do here if i just go to the uv editing what i want to do is i want to paint dirt on, on this surface and if we go into this object go into edit mode and select all of these faces you can see set them all here i just push this this way for a second to have a proper look i've got um islands which are overlapping islands and really and truly it, it's probably not a very good surface for me to paint onto uh but i could really do with having a, a different a different texture map for doing that and also then i can then paint directly onto the object which is really what i want to do so this first part is kind of even though it's to do with texture painting it's also a little bit of a, a a useful thing that involved with uh, uv mapping because what most people don't realize when they open blender and also it, i think this is prevalent in a lot of packages now is that you can have more than one set of uv coordinates stored on your object because your object is just no, it's just a series of numbers. It's a series of numbers, series of zeros and ones in the data blocks that basically dictate where things exist. So there's no reason why instead of just one UV map, you have another UV map. So what I'm going to do very quickly is because scales are off and all sorts of things are there and everything when I start painting would look awful. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down to my um, mesh data for my object, which is called uh, cube 2 obviously because that's the bottom floor of all Tudor buildings was always called cube 2 big heavy sigh so um, well, <laughs> we're going to move this a little bit further across here for now just, just a little bit more out of the way and I'm going to go down to my UV maps at the moment you can see there's UV map and I want to create a new placement for my UV coordinates so in order to do that I have to create a new UV map in essence but I don't want to duplicate what I've got by dint of accident it actually does that so if i press one it gives me a new uv map so if i go over here and we can see uv map one and uv map they're both exactly the same but for one thing i don't like the name uv map so i'm going to call this uh, uv mask uh, let's call it uv dirt mask and these are going to be brand new uvs so let's just do that while we're in it so i'm going to go here going to go uv I'm going to go smart UV project and I'm going to have an island margin of 0.01 and leave everything else uh, the angle limit and so on to itself and go okay and now you'll see that in here we've been given beautiful setup uh, vertices where everything is correct in terms of scale in relation to all the others it's actually not a bad pack actually as well I mean we could go and UV pack the islands a bit better but it, it it doesn't really do a great deal at all but there's the door there and there's all the sides of the walls and the roof and all of this lovely stuff is all in the right place it's all it's all correct so let's leave that where it is by the way when i say roof I actually in floor because of course the roof is up there um so here we are we've now got a new uv map but i want to be sure that we've got the right map connected to the right shading setup so if we go to shading right now right and if i go in here this is the shader on our object on the floor just bring this over here a second so we can see it all properly um that's a texture of my root tiles this is a painting area uh yep it's uh, the shading area actually is 
I don't know, I quite like their layout. It, it's not too bad. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'll have a look here. I've got the UV coordinate, which is from the object. So I can say I just want the UV coordinate from uh, from my object, but it's pulling it from the object it's sitting on. So that's absolutely fine. Um, and I'm going to say, right, so uh, yeah, that, that's sitting on that there. That's absolutely fine. And it's walls clay bottom, not wall clay top, which is on the top one. Okay, so I'm not going to affect anything, on, anything above. That's great. But I need it to have those exact UVs that I've created. The ones that over here are called in the UV maps, UV map. I don't want it using UV dirt map. So what I'm going to do is go to input. I'm going to add UV map. And what it does is it looks on the object that's there and says, which coordinate space am I using? Am I using, and I'll have to zoom in a little bit here to help for you to see, am I using uh, UV map or am I using UV, UV, UV mask? Well, it defaults to UV map. So I'm going to put UV map into here and drop that there out of the way. So that now looks exactly the same. But if I change that to UV dirt mask, I don't know whether you noticed that then. Everything changed. Scale wise, everything changed. Now it's going into here and it's set to scale in the mapping. That's so we have much more repeating going on. So that's that's great. It, 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 it looks okay, but it's, you can see where there are repeats going on. So that's obviously useless to us for doing um, a dirt map. So what we're going to do now, and this is where we come back to UV painting. I'm going to delete that texture coordinate space and leave that and change that back to UV mask. So that's that's using the correct vertices for me here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, right, well, I want to add some dirt to this, but I want to use the UV map that I created for the dirt, the UV dirt mask, as my placement. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to go to add an input. I'm going to add a UV map. I'm going to click on dirt mask doesn't change anything at all because it's not going into anything. I'm going to add in here a mix RGB. I'm going to drop that here. I'm going to drop this color into the top color and that color into the base color. So that basically just mixes these two together. So if I put red in that, you'll see red occur over the top. It's just mixing. It's just doing a straightforward one or the other. But because obviously they're both the, the, the factory is at 0.5 in the middle, it's giving us both equally on top of each other. So that's doing what it should do, and that bit there is correct. But what I need is a new image that I can paint. So I'm going to go into uh, Texture. I'm going to go to Image Texture, like this. And if I just zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit more accurately what I'm doing, I'm going to create a new texture. And I'm going to call it uh, Ground Floor Dirt Mask. I'm going to change it from 1024 to 2048. 2048, as I get my number pad to work correctly, 2048. I'm going to leave it as black, which is going to be full of alpha. I don't need to be 32 bit because I'm not doing anything with normals. It's just a black white map is what I want. And I'm going to go OK. So that's now created me a map. It's not got anything in it. It's created inside a blender and it's something that we can work with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a mapping node. So let's go to uh, vector mapping, pop that there. I want the UV to go into that vector. I'm going to change that to vector and I'm going to change this vector into there. So final thing is I'm going to change this very quickly to non-color data and stick the color into there. Now all of a sudden we go straight back to seeing just our walls. Well the reason for that is because with it being black it's bringing back our color one. It's not revealing, revealing color two at all. We'll reveal color two the moment we add some white to it. So let's get on and do that, shall we? Let's do that. So I'm going to go over here to Texture Paint. And in Texture Paint, we can see our old UV map. Um, and also, what we can't see is we can't see the ground floor dirt mask. So I'll pick that. That's now selected. And if you look, we can just see, if I just change this to a bark, hang on, have we got have we actually got it on the shading mode? There you go. Um, let's go back here to the ground floor dirt mask. And I'm now going to paint onto this. So I can see where my door frame, here, frame is here, but I don't want to see, as I say, I don't want to see that UV map. So go over here and we go and click on UV dirt mask. So we can actually see the UV dirt mask for our object. The texture coordinate for the UV dirt mask kind of thing. So. I can see if I just stick on wireframe, you can see now the sort of areas we're looking at. So I'm going to change this text paint color to white. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to make my brush because obviously that's a 2048 map. So I'm going to make my 
press F on the keyboard, I'm just going to scale that up very quickly. And I'm just going to do this. And you'll see straight away that appears above the doorway. Now, obviously, that's too much. That's fine. But we're in texture paint here as well, obviously. So if I wanted to, I could do this and paint a little bit in here. So I'm now painting a little bit of dirt directly onto my object. It's okay. You know, it's not too bad. It feels a little bit okay. It's starting to feel a little bit like, you know, uh, collected dirt, really. But I don't know, I'm not too sure about that. I'm just gonna go back a few stages. Let's go back until I get rid of all of that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new brush. So I'm going to press N on here and I'm going to just click on the copy to get a new brush. I'm going to call this texture paint. Okay. So let's go down here to texture and I'm going to go new and that gives me a, not a texture that I can't see. So I'm going to click on here because we're in this object and you can see here it's got the brush texture mat. I'm going to change this and I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it a Musgrave. So if I paint now, you'll see it creates that texture in there. And if I zoom in, it doesn't affect it here at all. So it's just the one size. So now I can say, right, well, let's just zoom in here and paint a bit like this. Now you can see here is different to me painting with this one here. If I zoom out and paint a brush stroke, it feels more like that. If I zoom out and paint a brush stroke, it's wider. If I put it out and do a brush stroke, it's wider, which is why it's often better to do this. Even though you're painting here, just try and keep a good distance, otherwise you end up with it all looking a bit wrong. Whereas here, you can scale it a bit, make it more strippy, okay? so you can feel it, so it feels like it's something that's wearing uh, downwards or something. So it has that sort of like stripy sort of feel. You can actually make things feel a bit more um, uh, random. So now I've got this on random, and you can see that every time I move the brush, it spins. So you get something a little bit more erratic, and then again, like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in here, I'm going to just paint, start to paint in some bits. And so you can see it's doing me some darker areas. Well, they're looking red at the minute, but the reason is because all that's showing through is uh, red in our shader. So let's. Let's very quickly go back to our shader. Let's change this. Let's desaturate it and make it darker. So there you go, that feels a lot more like dirt. And it's a bit more in keeping with what we're trying to achieve. Anyway, so let's go back to texture paint. And then we can go in here and do this. And then here we do this. Zoom in a bit, try and keep things a bit more accurate. There'll be a lot more dirt in this bit here, for example. Make it a bit thicker if you can. There you go. And again, up here, let's just try. And if you're not too keen, you go back to your text that you first created by clicking on there. And if we set that to black, then we can paint it back out. So we've got a, we essentially, it's almost like an erasing tool. It's actually not, you're just painting black over what you've done. So it's, it kind of, it's, it's just a, it's a, it's a cheeky eraser, should we say. So you can see here, this is obviously where the texture is, and that's the bottom of the wall, and that's the top of the wall. But there you go, straight away, we've got something which is starting to look a little bit more, well, realistic, I suppose, is probably the best way to put it. So let's just go back to shading, let's have a look at that now. Look at that, that's loads better. Loads, loads better, we love that. Now what I'm very, very quickly gonna do as well, and I'm gonna do this, I am gonna do this very, very quickly, because that's one use for texture paint, so you can draw onto things. But the other thing you can do is you can actually use it for separating out shaders. So at the moment, there's no shader on this particular floor. Well, there is, there's just a base shader. So what I'm gonna do very quickly 
is going to go up here and these textures by the way that you see on the wood and so on these have come from uh, texture haven and um they are they're brilliant i absolutely love them but i've got basically what i'm going to do here i'm going to bring in very quickly a cobblestone texture and i'm, I'm not going to do the motions of building two entire shaders i'm just going to add a couple of textures so i've got a cobblestone texture and i am going to get a brown mud texture like this so they're going to drag down again texture haven thank you very much and I'm going to here, I'm going to color, I'm going to go mix RGB, I'm going to put that one onto that color. No, I'm not, I'm going to put that one to that color. I'm going to put that one onto that color. Do it again. I'm going to draw it onto the color. There we go. So now what we can see is um, we, there is there is no fight. Um, mud, cobble, co mud, cobble. Turn off that specular. I'm going to keep up the reference. And just, this is, as I say, this is just for speed. So I'm going to very, very quickly, I'm going to do Control T and a Control T. In fact, because they are essentially roughly the same scaling, I'm just going to do that to Control T there and get rid of those two. And something I discovered recently was if you press S on the keyboard inside of here, you can scale things closer or further away from each other, which is great. And even even rotate works, which I think is fabulous. It just ooh, having too much fun. Um, and I'm going to change this to texture, 0.2 and 0.2. And so we've got cobbles now in front of the house. But obviously, I said that, no, no, let's make that 0.15, 0.15. Mm, I oh, I'm going to be a pedant, 0.1 and 0.1. There you go. Now that scale-wise, that looks better. That looks better. So please excuse my pedantry. Um, but at the moment, we want, there's mud. Oh, that looks a bit, a bit odd. And then a tile, which I can get away with, but that mud. Do you know what? I actually am going to go back to having two separate mappings. <gasps> oh, dear. So let's very quickly, where's my mud? That's my mud. Let's get that under control T. And so there you go. And I'm just, let's just set this to uh, three, three, three. That's, uh, um, oh, you know, that's maybe a little bit. Um, I am now going to do basically the same sort of thing I was doing with the other one, which is create not so much a new texture map, but I'm going to create a new map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, so we've got the mud there, and that's peering over the top of the cobbles. But I want to have a little bit of mud around the house, uh, but I want to see the cobbles. So let's go and add a texture, and we're going to go and image texture. And we're going to go new. And we're going to call this Road Dirt Mask. I'm going to leave it again at 2048. In fact, let's go 4096 for the sake of argument here. Let's go 4096. It does create an actual map, right? So that's now, that's now going to be there when we go to texture paint. And I'm going to very quickly add uh, uh, texture wooden space. The control T. There you go. And I'm going to change that from RGB to non-color because it's not. We just want zeros and one data. And I'm going to plug that into the factor. And straight away we see the cobbles. So let's get a texture paint. And let's go over here. And here you can see this is our texture. So here we are with our, our environment with our texture map now on our ground. We can just see the one for the time being. And obviously this is our texture for our Oh, oh, our land, our, our land itself. So right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to work. I just want to work pretty broadly here. And that's what I'm just going to very quickly paint the surrounding bits of my house. Just, just there. You can see there's no panelling on that. It's like a studio set. There's nothing on the back. So I'm going to just do this and get some dirt, a little bit of dirt around here. And then maybe if I just go back to my first brush and I just erase a bit there. So, and what we're doing now is I'm going to go into here, closer into my 4096 map. So if I try and do that rendering here, you'll notice I can't get anything happening with the brush. I think it, I'm not entirely sure why that is. Hmm, not entirely sure why that is. Anyway, oh, don't want to do that. But what I want to do now is just put a bit more information down on here but because of the way it works it's probably best if I try and do it here using this brush here in this so if I do this now you can see here I'm getting 
little scrubby bits of dirt around my barrel. A little bit there, a little bit there. Something, something nice on the cobbles. That's the reason why I did the big map first. So we can actually see where I'm putting it. And then we can come in here, a bit more there. It's definitely where the house is, the edges of. And then we can go, right, let's come over here. And let's add a little bit more over on this side of the door. Let's add a bit more there, that's good. I like that. Let's just go back though in history a little bit and do that. Just, and so I'm actually watching what I'm doing by the door rather than watching what I'm doing in the paint window. But I can easily do this and just bring that up to here. And it still looks a little bit broken, a little bit like where I'm seeing part of the dirt. I'm not seeing all the dirt. I'm just seeing part of the dirt. I want to, I want, I, right at the edge there, I should be seeing a lot more dirt. A lot more dirt. I want, I want full mud right at the edge. Well, that's simple enough. Let's uh, make a new brush. That one there, and we're going to call this one white. For the sake of argument, uh, argument. For the sake of argument, and I'm going to go up to and leave it on mix, and I'm going to remove the texture setting. So if I can remember how to do that, that's going to be the fun bit. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to go, burr, goodbye texture. So now if I paint here, I'm getting just white. And as you see, remember this is a full. 096 map, but it's revealing through all of my lovely dirt. Oh, look at that. Right at that doorstep. No, yeah, I mean, it's going to be nasty, isn't it? It's going to be nasty, a bit nastier there. But I suppose there would be some footfall, wouldn't there? So maybe I'll just take a bit of that out. Yeah, I'm just going to make sure I get a bit more of a barrel. There we go. Ooh. That barrel looks particularly manky around there now. So let's just let's just erase a little bit just actually at the doorstep. So let's go back to my big brushes and go back to my first one, which I'll rename black. And let's just try and get some. A little bit there. And let's go back again. There we go. I quite like that. I, I like that. And, but then, when you look at it now, see, if it's even better. It is. It is always. It is always these little touches that make things look better, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, if I just hit F12 here, so you know what you've what you could able, what you're able to do is just add a little bit more colour into the darker areas here because this looks too far too clean. Whereas that's starting to look a bit more like it should be. It's you know slightly run down, possibly a Tudor pub. You know, but it's still it's not it's just not a fait accompli. It's not completed, but it gives you somewhere to start with, and at least maybe work in. You can still work it up inside of Blender, obviously, but it could be taken into Photoshop or it could be taken into Critter. I would recommend Critter, of course, because Critter is open source, and then you can generate all the sorts of lovely things that you really want to be able to create with this being as a good starting point. Anyway, I hope hope that's been of some use to you. Um, I, again, obviously I love Blender, but I'm a big fan of all the things that you can do in it. And this is, having two UV maps is one great thing, but being able to just paint roughly into it things that you want to do on top of basically textures you've already got. And don't forget, you can't, it's not, this isn't just for painting color maps and, and like separation masks. You can paint bump, you can paint displacement, you can paint all sorts of things directly inside a Blender. Anyway, well, I hope that's been some use to you. Um, uh, as always, stay safe, stay at home, don't mix with people. Just watch my tutorials and everybody else's, of course, as well, because as we all know, other tutorials are available. But mine, mine, I like to think are reasonably um, fun, maybe. I don't know. Who knows? Um, I like them. Um, as long as I'm happy, that's all that counts. If only it actually was always the case. <laughs> Stopping now. Right, okay, anyway. Um, if you've enjoyed this, uh, you know, leave a comment, like it, subscribe if you want more of them, uh, and just, you know, have fun with Blender. It's the best thing in the world. Anyway, uh, look after yourselves, take care, and I'll see you in the following week.